What's up, Night Owl? Still here back with another video, and today I'm experimenting with a new series. I want to make detailed guide videos on specific monsters and how to run them and the tactics that they use in combat, what treasure they carry, what monsters they fight with, you know, their allies, things like that. I want to make videos like that for, for DMs to kind of understand how to read stat blocks and how to run specific monsters. And I'm gonna start this series off with a very simple monster. Everybody's run before, everybody's fought before, everybody understands how they work. They don't have any spells, they're just really simple to run. And again, this is just an experiment to see if this is something that people would like more of. I can do more complicated monsters later if people are interested in the series. So let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or if you like this. And let's have a look at that goblin stat block. Goblins are a tier one monster, meaning they are great to send against a party between levels one and four. Even a quick glance at the goblin stat block is all it takes to see where their strengths and weaknesses lie. Dexterity being their highest stat, which combined with their ability nibble escape lays out exactly where your focus should be. High dex means high stealth, which they use with nimble escape to alternate hiding and attacking. Goblins have a low strength, so they will be sticking with weapons that allow them to use dexterity to its fullest effect. It's for this reason the scimitar, which is a finesse weapon, and the bow are on their stat block. And it's here we can make our very first adjustment to the stat block. If you want to spice up your goblins a little bit, you can switch up that scimitar with a whip, dagger, or a short sword. Most of these weapons are light and can be dual wielded, but keep in mind using their bonus action for an offhand attack means they can't use it for nimble escape. Goblins also have dark vision, which they will use to its fullest effect. As a matter of fact, goblins will probably run away if they don't have a blanket of darkness to protect them in their ambush. And they will be able to identify targets that don't have dark vision and appear to be lost in the darkness. As for weaknesses, the goblin only has seven hit points. A single hit will pretty much put them out of the fight. In my opinion though, their greatest weakness is their minus one wisdom. Wisdom is one of the three primary stats, the other two being Dexterity and Con. A lot of spells will target a Wisdom save, and it's these that the goblins will have the most difficulty with. A goblin can easily avoid attacks that require an attack roll because their high dex translates directly to a high AC, and on top of that, they'll be avoiding melee combat altogether with Nimble Escape. And I want to note here that the goblin stat block says that they have a 15 AC with a shield. The goblin's AC will drop to 13 when using a bow, as they will be unable to wield a shield because the bow requires both hands. Whereas common damaging spells like burning hands and sacred flame require a dex save, which will result in reduced damage against the goblin, spells that target wisdom like toll the dead or charm person will have a much better chance of success. And with the goblin's low hit points, a single sleep spell has the potential to single-handedly put an end to a goblin ambush. From a lore standpoint, goblins are terrified of death, and not out of a fear of the unknown or loss. It's the fear of their own god, Maglubiet. Goblins know that their cruel god, Maglubiet, waits for them at the infinite battlefield of Akron. So goblins can be expected to run away at even the slightest hint that a battle is not going their way. And they will not engage an opponent unless they can outnumber them. In combat, goblins will have a very consistent action economy. Their bonus action will almost exclusively go towards nimble escape, and their action will be firing their bow with advantage because they're hidden at the softest target. Their movement will be used to maintain cover as well as keep the enemy far enough to where they can't reach the goblin, but still close enough to be in their bow's effective range. If an enemy happens to close the gap on the goblin and threaten them with melee, then the goblin will still use their nimble escape, but they'll instead use it to disengage instead of hide, and they'll use their action to dash, thereby doubling their movement, giving them 60 feet of movement without provoking attacks of opportunity, and they'll move far away from the enemy and then start using their bow again. This dash disengage combo also applies if the goblin is trying to run away from the enemy. If a goblin is captured, then they will beg, plead, bargain, and say anything they have to in order to survive and eventually try to get away. The moment the opportunity presents itself, a goblin will use their dash disengage combo to get as far away from their captors as possible, and they will hide if necessary. If you want to build a goblin encounter with more than just goblins in it, here are some creatures that goblins ally themselves with. Goblins will make pets out of giant rats and wolves, although they are needlessly cruel to any subordinates. Both of these creatures will be on the front line using their pack tactics, 
and wolves are actually medium-sized creatures, which means goblins can use them as mounts. A goblin boss, hobgoblin, and bugbear can all serve as leaders to a goblin camp. The goblin boss is a much stronger melee combatant than it is a ranged attacker, but it will not engage in melee unless it has a bunch of its subordinates surrounding it so it can use its redirect attack ability. This ability allows the goblin boss to choose a goblin to take a melee hit for it. The goblin boss has no interest in getting hit, even though it has superior AC and hit points to the regular goblin. Goblin spellcasters are rare, and even the ones that do learn magic don't get much farther than cantrips and first level spells. And finally, there's the Nilbog, which has the ability to charm enemies and negate damage outright. It's unlikely that a host of goblins will contain any more than one Nilbog. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this series, and if you have any suggestions or monsters that you would like to see covered. My socials are also in the description, Twitter, Discord, etc. Come by, ask questions. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.